the Sony ZV-E10 versus the GoPro Hero 10 versus the DJI Osmo Pocket 2. Which of these three cameras is the best for vlogging and overall usage? The answer may surprise you. Hello friends and welcome back to the studio. This is Susie with Gemini Connect. We've got a lot to talk about in this video, so I'm gonna give you a brief overview of what to expect. I also have some timestamps here and also in the description below if you wanna jump ahead to any of the sections. But I'm gonna start out by explaining why I chose these three cameras to compare, and then we're gonna compare them on 12 specific points in order to determine which of these three cameras is the best for vlogging. So out of all the vlogging cameras out there, what made me choose these three cameras? Well, the main qualifier was the price. I wanted these to be relatively affordable and budget friendly. So all three of these cameras are under 1000 US dollars. Second, I wanted to choose cameras that had a relatively low learning curve. So anybody could pick up these cameras and start using them pretty quickly without any prior use or knowledge of cameras. And finally, I wanted to choose three distinctly different cameras and see how they would compare in a vlogging scenario. So first up is the DJI Pocket 2. If you're not familiar, this is a pretty unique camera because it also is a gimbal, which has its pros and cons, which we'll discuss in a minute. But this is one of the best gimbal cameras out there, even though it is a little bit older because it came out in August 2020. Next up, we have the GoPro Hero 10. This is GoPro's latest model that was released in October 2021. So it's the newest camera of the bunch. And in my opinion, it's the best GoPro that's ever been made and possibly even the best action camera on the market right now. I have done other videos comparing older GoPros to the Insta360 ONE R, the Insta360 GO 2, and even the DJI Osmo Action. And in my opinion, GoPro still comes out on top for a lot of reasons. So that's why GoPro is here representing the action cameras. And finally, we had the Sony ZV-E10. This one came out in August 2021, and it was Sony's brand new vlogging camera. It's branded as such and has some really cool features that make vlogging really easy. And since I mentioned price, let's go over that for each of these cameras. The DJI Pocket 2 is the cheapest of the bunch. It comes in at $350 for the camera alone, or you can buy the Creator Combo, which includes the camera plus a bunch of accessories such as this DJI wireless microphone. Next up, we have the GoPro Hero 10. This is the most expensive GoPro of them all, and it can be purchased for $500, or you can get it for $400 if you also opt in for a $50 GoPro subscription. That GoPro subscription can be a good deal because it does extend your warranty, gives you 50% off of accessories if you buy them on the GoPro website, and it also includes an unlimited cloud backup. And finally, we have the Sony ZV-E10, which is the most expensive camera. The camera itself can be purchased for $700, but you also need a lens with it. So I recommend getting this kit lens. It's a 16 to 50 millimeter power zoom lens, super compact, has image stabilization, and it can be purchased along with a camera body for a total of $800, which is still pricey, but a really good deal. Now let's take all three of these cameras out on the field and see how they stack up on those 12 comparison points. The first comparison point is image quality. All three of these cameras can shoot at least 4K and the Sony ZV-E10 caps out at 4K 30 frames per second or 1080p 120 frames per second slow motion. Next is the DJI Osmo Pocket 2. This one caps out at 4K 60 frames per second and it can do slow motion at 1080p 120 frames per second or super slow 240 frames per second slow motion. And finally, we have the GoPro, which is able to shoot the best resolution of them all. It's the second GoPro that's able to shoot in 5K, but this Hero 10 can now do 5.3K at 60 frames per second, and it can do 4K 120 frames per second slow motion. It can also do super slow 240 frames per second slow motion at 2.7K resolution. So the GoPro caps out at the highest resolution and the most resolutions when it comes to 
slow motion as well. So which resolution is best for you really depends on your workflow. Quite a few people still are shooting in 1080p and not even shooting in 4K, let alone 5K. So the 4K, 5K debate may not even be applicable to you, but if it does matter and you need the highest resolution possible and the highest frame rate possible, then the GoPro is gonna be your best bet. But for the rest of us, I think 4K is more than enough for most of our needs. Another sticking point might be slow motion. If you really need that super slow 240 frames per second slow motion, then the DJI Pocket 2 and the GoPro are gonna give you the best choices. And as a sub point to image quality, all three of these cameras can shoot in a log or a flat profile. That means that your video quality is really muted and stripped down of colors. But this means that it gives you more flexibility to add your own custom color profiles in post-production. The second comparison point is the camera's ability to shoot close up or macro shots in video or photo. And the camera that sucks the most at that is the GoPro. GoPros are great for you know action and because they have such a wide field of view, they're great at getting everything in focus as long as the subject is a certain distance from the camera. But in general, the closer you get to the camera's lens for the GoPro, the less the camera sees. And so it's not really good at picking up things that are right in front of it. And that's true even on the newest GoPro Hero 10. Next up is the DJI Pocket 2. This camera also is not the best at shooting close-up photos and videos, but it does a better job than the GoPro. But the real winner of them all when it comes to those close-up shots is the Sony ZV-E10. It does, of course, depend on what kind of lens that you're using on the camera, but assuming you are using this kit lens, you can get some really good close-up shots. And the Sony ZV-E10 even has a custom button here that is designed to create that bokeh or that blurred out background and showcase products. In fact, if you're looking for consistent bokeh in your photos and videos, then the Sony is going to be your best bet because it has that dedicated button to do just that and you can also swap it out for different lenses because certain lenses are better at bokeh than others. The next comparison point is low light performance. And in this category, GoPro again comes in dead last because GoPros have always been horrible at shooting in low lighting. And that is still the case even with the brand new GoPro Hero 10. In second place, I'll have to give that to the Sony. The Sony does have a really big sensor, actually the biggest sensor of them all, and it does a pretty good job in low lighting. However, if you're vlogging with the Sony, then you can see that the stability is just really, really awful. But in general, I think that the Sony did a decent job in low lighting, but it wasn't as good as the clear winner here, which was the DJI Pocket 2. This camera did incredibly well in low light. You do see a lot of grain or noise in your image. It's still not optimal for shooting in low light, but if you have to, the image quality is pretty good. And more importantly, the image quality is stable because of the camera on the gimbal and the gimbal gives you that really stable look. And that's something that you lose with the GoPro and the Sony. The next comparison point is the camera's ability to zoom. Now, all three of these cameras can zoom. The GoPro has probably the weirdest zoom of all because it's not a true zoom. Instead, it's kind of like an image crop, and you do that by choosing digital lenses. You can go from a narrow shot, which is the most zoomed in, to linear, to wide, to super view. The problem with GoPro though, is that if you ever want to zoom by changing your digital lens, you have to go into your settings and physically choose a new lens. And that can be really disruptive because you have to pause recording if you're filming a video or if you're taking a photo, you have to go into the settings and fiddle with that just to zoom in a little bit. As for the DJI Pocket 2, the ability to zoom is brand new on the second iteration of the Pocket. It was not available on the original Osmo Pocket, but now they have a little joystick and you can program this to zoom up to eight times into your image. And this can be done as you're actively filming video and it can work for both photo and video but the camera that does the very best at zooming is the Sony, and that's because you can change the lens out. So you can have a fixed lens that doesn't zoom at all, or you can put like an ultra telephoto on here and get super zoomed in shots. And so that flexibility is why the zoom feature is the best on the Sony. 
The next comparison point is the sound quality, which is super important for vlogging. Now, all three cameras have built-in internal microphones, and you can take them out and vlog and record sound without adding an external microphone. So this is what it sounds like using just those built-in microphones on the cameras. All right, continuing our walking tests with the Sony, the DJI, and the GoPro. And I'm not really exactly in the same shot for all three cameras since their form factors are so different. It's really hard to keep them on the same plane. And for the Sony, it's actually zoomed in the most, so it's a little hard to uh, make the same shot as the GoPro, which is probably the widest out of all three of these. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like there's a really clear winner here when it comes to the sound quality, and that goes to the Sony. I think that the audio quality was really rich, and it did a good job of isolating my voice and picking up some ambient sound without drowning out my voice. So the built-in microphone for the Sony is right here on top of the camera, which is really good for giving you all-around coverage, whether you're standing in front of the camera, to the side of it, or behind it. And Sony also includes this little windscreen, which you can put onto the cold shoe mount of your camera, and then you have a little windscreen to give you even better audio quality if you're in a windy area. You can improve the audio quality of any of these cameras by adding an external microphone, such as this little Rode Video Micro. The only thing is only one camera here has a built-in 3.5 millimeter microphone jack, and that is the Sony ZV-E10. So I can easily add this Rode Video Micro, plug it into the Sony, and start vlogging away. If I want to add this microphone or any other external microphone to the GoPro and the DJI Pocket 2, then I have to buy an added accessory. For the GoPro, that's the Media Mod. So this Media Mod comes with that mic jack, as well as some built-in microphones that arguably uh, increase the quality from the sound. And for the DJI Pocket 2, there's a little add-on here that includes the 3.5 millimeter mic jack and it also includes access to the DJI wireless microphone, which is included in the Creator Combo. All right, this should be a pretty interesting sound test now. So for the DJI Osmo Pocket 2, I have the microphone that it came with, and I've also got the media mod on the GoPro Hero 10 with the front microphone facing or on, and also the Sony ZV-E10 with that built-in microphone and the fluffy windscreen on it. So this is what it sounds like with all three cameras and whatever uh, sound enhancement that they came with. Okay, now those cameras are facing forward, still with the same microphone conditions, using that front mic on the GoPro Media Mod and the built-in microphone on the Sony ZV-E10 and the little wireless microphone that came with the DJI Osmo Pocket 2. And this is what it sounds like. So after listening to the sound comparison of all three cameras, even with the GoPro Media Mod and the DJI wireless microphone, I still think that the Sony came out on top. I think that the sound was the richest and the clearest and just overall was the best. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. The next comparison point is also really important for vlogging, but that is stabilization or the camera's ability to give you non-shaky video. Now, all three cameras have some form of stabilization built in. For the Sony, it's something called SteadyShot. For the GoPro, it's an electronic stabilization called HyperSmooth. And for the DJI, well, that's just the physical gimbal here. The gimbal does a lot of work in keeping that video stable. Now, which of these is the best? Well, I think that Sony is actually the worst here. Even though it has steady shot and it does help a little bit with stabilization, it's still not very good in terms of shakiness. So that leaves the GoPro and the DJI Osmo Pocket 2. Both of these cameras have really impeccable image stabilization, and it's really hard to draw a winner here as long as you're shooting out with enough lighting. All right, continuing my walk in the forest with the Sony, the DJI, and the GoPro. And this is the sound quality test as well as the stability test. Now I've got actually some really varying light conditions here, so I am pretty curious to see how they all hold up. The second that you lose the lighting, then the DJI is the clear winner here because that physical gimbal is keeping that camera stabilized and still giving you really steady footage. 
With that said, there is a way to get more stable and steady footage for both the GoPro and the Sony, and that is by adding a physical gimbal such as this Moza Mini P. This is a $200 gimbal. It's actually really compact and it would work with both the GoPro and the Sony. And it makes a world of difference in terms of being able to get steadier footage no matter your lighting conditions. We're using the Moza Mini P as a stabilizing gimbal and we've also added the Rode Video Micro with the windscreen. So this is the sound quality with the Rode and the stabilization with the gimbal. The next comparison point is photo quality. All three cameras can shoot still photos, and they can do so in JPEG or RAW format. RAW format is really useful if you have access to an image editing uh, software such as Photoshop because it gives you more flexibility to fine tune your image. So in general, if you're really serious about your photography, then you'll probably want to be shooting in RAW. When it comes to the very best camera for still photography, I think all three of these cameras are actually really great but I think that the Sony comes out on top because of its ergonomic design of the camera, which makes it really optimal for taking still photos. But we also have to give a shout out to DJI because it has the highest resolution photos at 63 megapixels per photo, which is ridiculously high considering these other two cameras are down in the low 20 megapixel uh, side of things. Next up is the front facing screen, which again is really important for vlogging because you wanna be able to see exactly what you're shooting. All three cameras have a front facing screen of sorts. So for the Sony ZV-E10, that is a physical screen that flips out and can go forward like this. For the GoPro, it now has a built in front facing screen on the front and it has a nice LCD in the back. And for the DJI Osmo Pocket 2, it just has a single LCD, but because this camera on the gimbal can go from front to back, it serves as a back-facing screen or a front-facing screen, depending on how your camera is oriented. Now, which of these front-facing screens is best really depends on your personal preferences. For the Sony, it has the biggest LCD screen, which makes it really easy to see exactly what you're shooting. However, this LCD screen is on the side of the lens. And so I found that I had a tendency to keep looking at the LCD rather than at the lens, which can look really odd in the final video. With the GoPro, I have screens on the front and the back, so it's easy to just flip between uh, both or orientations. However, for that front facing screen, I once again have it on the side of the lens. So there is a tendency to look off to the side rather looking directly into the lens. And finally, for the DJI Osmo Pocket 2, it has a single screen, which can be cumbersome, although it is really easy to flip your camera back and forth. But the nice thing is that the LCD lines up with the camera. So even though it's just below the camera, it's not off to the side. So if you are looking at the LCD, it's a little bit less obvious. And another bonus for the DJI is that you can connect your phone to the camera and that gives you an even bigger LCD. So it's arguably the biggest LCD because it's even bigger than that of the Sony. So for the LCD, I would actually give that to the DJI because of the flexibility. The next comparison point is ease of use. Now again, this was a really important thing for me when it came to choosing these cameras. I wanted cameras that were relatively easy to learn how to use and weren't super complicated. And all three of these cameras have auto functions. You can power them on and start recording without fiddling with the menus. Uh, with that said though, there are some downsides to some of these cameras, the Sony being one of them. It comes set on that auto mode, so it's really easy to get started with it. However, when you power this camera on, the menu can look really, really intimidating. And also that LCD, it's got all these numbers and little symbols all over the place. I've used a lot of Sony cameras, so for me, it was pretty familiar, but it can take a little while to get used to all of the different buttons and settings in this camera, just because of how much you can do with it. With that said, if you leave the camera on its auto settings, then it is really easy to just point and shoot this camera and get some really high quality video out of it. 
In the case of the DJI Osmo Pocket 2, it's got really great auto settings that you don't even need to touch if you just want to get started shooting. But it does also have an optional pro mode if you want to go in and have manual control over your settings. There is a bit of a learning curve though, just because this uh, camera is also a gimbal. And if you've never used a gimbal before, then it takes some getting used to. It's not terribly difficult in this form, but it does take some practice to get used to how a gimbal moves. And finally, we have the GoPro, which in my opinion is the easiest camera to get started with and to shoot with, because even though it also has manual controls like the rest of these cameras here, I would say that manual is really the mode that you don't want to use so often on this camera. The GoPro really excels the best if you leave it on auto, in my opinion. Whew, we're almost there. Just two more comparison points. The next being battery life. So Sony has the worst battery life of all of these cameras coming in at 80 minutes per battery. It does have a physical battery that you can pop out, charge, and you can have multiple batteries to replace it with, and that will keep you going throughout the day. Next is the GoPro. Now this camera has a battery life of anywhere between 90 to 120 minutes, typically. It really depends on the settings that you're using because you may have heard of the GoPro overheating and that definitely does happen if you're shooting at the maximum resolution of 5.3K at 60 frames per second or 4K 120 frames per second. In that case, the camera tends to overheat and shut off after about 20 minutes, maybe 30 to 40 minutes if you're lucky. So that isn't exactly battery life, but it is related to how long you can use the camera. But the nice thing is you can pop out the GoPro battery and swap it out with a fully charged one, as long as your GoPro hasn't overheated or you wait for it to cool down. And finally, the winner here for battery life is the DJI. It has a battery life of about 140 minutes, which is by far the longest out of all of these cameras here. The only downside is that it's a built-in battery. So once that battery dies, you can't swap it out for a new one. You have to fully charge the camera over again in order to use it. So a bit of a downside, but still by far the longest battery life of these cameras. We've almost made it. This is the very last comparison point, and that is an application outside of vlogging. So just how versatile are these cameras? Now, all three of these cameras, because they're so different, they have certain strengths that may or may not be applicable to you. The Sony, for example, is great just because you can swap it out for so many different lenses. You can go for a wide lens, a mid-range, a zoom. You can have such a range of lenses and focal lengths to choose from, and that's something that you can't do with the rest of these cameras. With that said, it's not very weatherproof, definitely not waterproof, and it can feel a little bit fragile, especially in comparison to something like the GoPro. The GoPro, it's, you know, you can't swap out the lenses, it's maybe not as flexible in some ways, but it is the most weatherproof and really the only action camera here. So you're able to take this out in pretty much any condition, and it's almost impossible to destroy this camera. And finally, we have the DJI Osmo Pocket 2, which is just a really unique and fun camera. If you've never seen it before, then it really might make you raise an eyebrow, but it's really fun to play with. It is not waterproof and definitely a little bit fragile in the sense that you have to make sure to not break this gimbal. You have to keep it pretty steady even when you're not using it but it has all of the benefits of a gimbal, which is something special because otherwise you would have to get a physical gimbal to use with these other two cameras to get the same benefits. So a couple of unique benefits of gimbals include the ability to do a motion or moving time-lapse. And related to that is the ability to have an active track feature so that the camera follows you as you move in front of it. And both of those are features that you can't do on the Sony and the GoPro unless you put them on top of a gimbal that supports that type of feature. And now let's answer that final question, which of these three cameras is the best vlogging camera? The answer is it really depends on your vlogging style. 
if you're gonna be sitting and planning the camera on a tripod and talking to it, kind of like what I'm doing right now, then a camera like the Sony might actually be the best for you. This is an indoor vlogging test with the Sony ZV-E10 using that built-in microphone and planting the camera on a tripod. Because even though it's not great at stabilization, it is really great at image quality and the built-in microphone is actually really decent and uh, the ability to change out the lenses also makes it really flexible. However, if you're gonna be walking around and vlogging and talking, then the Sony is not great with that unless you plan to put it on a gimbal. So if you're a walking vlogger and you really rely on that stabilization, then the GoPro and the DJI are gonna be your best bet, not only because of the stabilization, but also because of their form factor. They are a lot smaller than the Sony. So of the two cameras, the GoPro has always been my favorite just because it has the widest lens. And I like that wide angle lens because I'm often shooting with my partner, Martin. And in order for us both to fit in the lens, we really need to use a wide angle. And that's something that the DJI historically has not been very good at for us. I also really like the fact that the GoPro is waterproof, crush proof, and I basically don't have to worry about ever physically breaking it. The DJI, on the other hand, is a little bit more fragile. However, it performs so well in low light, which is something that GoPro has never been good at, so we just give up vlogging after dark with the GoPro. So I like that flexibility with DJI to vlog in the daylight or nighttime. And I also like this creator combo and the fact that it comes with this little wireless microphone. I think that the Sony still had better quality, but I think that the DJI mic was a lot better than the GoPro mic. Although you can of course replace the microphone on the GoPro and give it a better mic such as this Rode Wireless Go, but that adds to the cost. So the fact that the DJI came with this wireless this mic, which is actually really high quality, uh, really makes this a more viable vlogging solution. So considering the image quality, the sound quality, the ability to shoot in low light, and even to zoom as I'm filming video, the DJI is really coming out on top here. The only time that I might put the GoPro on top of the DJI is if I need that super wide angle lens and if I need a waterproof, crush proof, you know, overall super camera that just can't be beat. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Which of these three cameras would you place on top or would you use a totally different camera for vlogging? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.